And we are live. Welcome everyone. Today I wanted to do a tutorial on how I bring my characters to life inside my games. I feel like this is also a really good beginner tutorial because you don't really need any art skills to do this method that I'm doing. And it, it it's great for fast prototyping and, and getting stuff up and moving. Now the footage you see in the back is uh, some footage that I put together of some enemies that I'm creating for my retro FPS boomer shooter style game, very 90s arcade style kind of stuff. And these are 2D sprites, and these are in the game engine as Easy FPS Editor. And some people have asked about this editor and how to get these sprites up and running. So at the tail end of this, I'll show you how to put those in. Because once the leg work is done, it's super easy to put these inside the game engine. But this will also work for any other game engine if this is what you're after. This workflow will help you get um, your sprite, get you a whole sprite sheet ready for any character that you're, you're designing if this is the style you want to use. And at first I thought this was like a long-winded method of doing this. But the more research that I do, the more that I find out that if you didn't want to hand draw your sprites in the 90s, this was the method. You needed source material to record to get your sprites. So creating a 3D model for your uh, for your your character is 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 not a wild idea. Like this is actually industry standard. Um, one example of that is the first Mortal Kombat. The first Mortal Kombat they recorded live actors doing the motions and turned them into sprites. Doom One was another example. They took photos of clay models and then digitized those and then drew over those images uh, to create the sprites for all the enemies for that game. All right, enough babbling about that. Let's get into the actual workflow. So first we're gonna need characters. We need concepts, excuse me. For me, I go and speak to ChatGPT. He is, he is kind of my production partner. I talk to ChatGPT, we brainstorm some ideas. Once I'm, I'm solid on an idea, I ask ChatGPT to give me a text prompt that will work with Kriya and the Flux model. Very specific that it knows what it's doing. And then I put these in here and I pull the slot like a slot machine and we find out what we can get. Um, and this creates some really cool stuff. This is some stuff I'm working on for later on in the game. We've got this hyper realistic, so we're going to get a solid model out of these and it's going to feel like we've we've done just that. We've recorded an actual either a claymation model or a real life actor to get to get our sprites in the end. So once we're happy with something. Like here's a cool one. We take this guy, we pull it. We remove the background. And we're going to take it to another program. Like I said, you don't need art skills to do this. There's so many free tools out here. Well, some of these are paid. This, this is, there's a free trial with this. Um, even Korea has a paid model, but you get plenty of free credits with most of these, most of these tools. So we take our, our image and we head over to tripo3d.ai. I will leave links to all of these tools in the description below. And this is gonna give us a 3D model from our image. Perfect example is here's one of those characters I pulled earlier. I'm working on some more mutated creatures for later on in the game. Um, we've got this big nasty dude right here and this has all come from one single image that we've pulled from Korea. So we've got these pretty solid models. Note on this program, Tripo. Um, there's other ones out there too like Meshi and Rodin, but if you're using Tripo, um, you can customize what you want to put it in. So you use 3D Max, Houdini, Maya, um, Roblox, Unreal Engine. But it will change the model a little bit if you retop it from here. I do all my retopping with another program. So I download it as is. It comes out in a GLB. Um, and then you can transfer it to an FBX later on. Especially if you use something like good old Blender. Um, also, you can you know, get your, your textures attached correctly and all that good stuff um, once it pops out. One thing to note about these little GLB models, though, is they are just that. They are little. They are tiny. They are super 
like a speck of dust. But if you look at the statistics over here, triangles, this bad boy has 330,000 triangles in it. That is a, that is a ton. Um, and that's just AI being non-efficient. Um, so I would have to decimate this model a little bit because moving on, putting this in other programs, if this has a ridiculous amount of triangles, it could really slow down the workflow or give some programs some problems. So now that we've got a character, we've got a 3D model, now we have to animate him. Now we could rig and skin this inside of Blender, I'm not very good at that yet, and it's not very fast for me to do it. So I moved to another tool. And like I said, I'll put descriptions in the links below. Um, or I'll put links in the description below. Let's get that right. Um, I use Ac AccuRig by ActorCore. And this is kind of like a one-click, one-stop shop. Throw your character in there, and it will animate. So as we, we load character, Body rig, it's pretty good with humanoid characters about knowing exactly where, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and toes kind of stuff of. You may have to adjust depending on your character. But once he is up and rigged and moving, let's get to see this guy in action. Boom, we've got motion. So now we have a skeleton. Uh, now we have, now we need animation. So the next place that I go for free animations is Mixamo. And here's the soldier character that I'm working on for later on in the game also. Um, and we can just, Mixamo will recognize that there's already a rig here. And the reason I do that, Mixamo will rig this also, but it's very bare bones. AccuRig lets you control more of like where the shoulders are going to be, where the collarbone's gonna be, gives you more of a rigid structure. Um, cause sometimes mix and mode would just make Play-Doh out of your character. Um, but once you've got them, you can go through here and select all of the animations that you want to record for whatever your character's doing, download those. So now we have character, we have 3D model, 3D model is rigged and we have animations. Now we have to put all this together inside of something. Um, you could use Blender, Blender's a good option. For me though, I use Unity. Now this is strange going from one game engine to another, but this has been my fake studio um, for a couple years now. I'm really comfortable with Unity. Um, it allows me to work in this 3D space. Uh, I can drag animations in really quickly, assign them really quickly. And that's the thing with me is about speed because this, this is a long process. So the faster, I can get this done the faster I can get my my sprites into my game and start testing them. So this fake studio has been the home of all of like let's let's see how bad I can mess this if I can move around a little bit here. Let's go behind the deal. The actual base and here's R7 and the whole gang. Everybody's been filmed real time and this fake TV studio that I have created. <laughs> um, and then I've set up the green screen situation. I've got a camera in place. So when we record, it's easy to pull the background out of this. It's chroma keyed already. Um, like I said before, you, got, you can put your camera wherever you want it, adjust it to any height, any size. Um, also what's important, sometimes when I see this attempt at retro spriting if the characters are in like what their original setting is so they put him in a, put them in a dark room or sometimes they won't adjust the coloring of the sprite itself and it will look like a billboard it just sticks out one of the things that you can do in here before you even record i have some lights set up so we can get some uh, we can get some extra shadows we can get some highlights from the light but let's say for example there was an alarm going off and the room was red. Now, by adjusting the light, you've assisted a little bit with the immersion of your character in your environment. And that's part of the whole thing with this 90 Retro Style 2 is you have to do kind of a lot of 
um, we're doing a lot of faking, we're doing a lot of mimicking um, to, to create the immersion because we don't have the real time lighting and all that good stuff. So, like I said, our guy is set up in here with animations. We record these animations, like this death scene. Once we have that video footage, it's on to the next part, and this is where it gets good. Let's close all these bazillion windows. Um, I had it here somewhere, texture frames. So I take that video footage and I put it into Shotcut, because I already have some hotkeys set up inside of Shotcut. It's already set up on my, my Steam Deck. Uh, you could use DaVinci Resolve, you can use probably CapCut. Any video editing software should be able to chop down your video into frames. You want PNGs because that's what um, a lot of times will be the best uh, format for 2D sprites. So I've cut this down into the frames and depending on whether you have your program set 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, I think shot cut is 24. I have mine set to by default and it will spit you out for every single second of video. You will get one single frame. And then you can scan through here and find out what position you want your character in. Like this is a good position where both feet are touching the ground. And then the next, we've got him in full stride. We'll cut that one. And then we'll go in and then here's probably the next frame. And then we've got like a full stride there. So those would be the four frames that I would need for walking. We remove the chroma key. Um, we take him and we put him in Photoshop or I use GIMP. Uh, and then we can do whatever we want to. We can add more highlights. We can change the colors. We can retrograde him as that's what I do. I add some dither effect. Let's show what those look like. So when it's cut out, we got our frames, we've got two attack frames, we've got dead on the ground, we've got actual death animation, we've got some hurt animations, idle, and then like four walk frames because that's what Easy SPS wants, is just four walk frames that default. If I zoom in, you can see the kind of the dithering and posturization and some of the color grading I did to give it that 90s arcade style. And then there we go. We're, we're finally to the point we've got our, our frames, we've got our sprites. Like this is, this is the final product for what we're going to put into our game. So since I'm using Easy FPS Editor and I promised that I would go over that, once the editor is open and you're ready to go, um, we can go up here to entity settings. We can go to enemy settings. And like, let's go to that same character, the fat zombie. And this is where we can set up all his functions, you know, how much damage, how fast he is, how big he is, um, attack delays, whether he explodes, all that good stuff. Um, but right here, import sprites. And you can see we've got an idle state, We've got moving states, we've got attack states, and then we'll just bring our stuff in here. Um, and this is the little mouse that I was working on earlier. But, you know, you would go to your file, wherever that's at, drag that particular frame in, and then just like that, once you hit accept, your guy is simply ready. We go to entities. You simply, you can just drag him and drop him on the map and he's ready to, ready to go to work for you. So like I said, I, I feel this is, a, this is the best workflow for me. There may be other ways, but on top of this, you, now you have a 3D model you can use for all sorts of things. So we can animate this guy, say we wanted to add features later, now we have a 3D model that we can just do what we want to do. We can put him in a 3D world and recording, put lights on him, animate him, you know, do whatever we want to do with him. Um, and then you've got all of that video footage of those frames. Um, easy FPS editor. Like I said, this is the default that they will allow you to put in, like say four frames for the moving. Once you get into scripting, as far as this engine goes, you can actually script in more so you can put in more frames to make the animation more smoother. And that's something I will probably do once we get into the polish phase 
of this game. But I figured I'd put this out here um, because this is a, this is super useful workflow, at least for me. Uh, hopefully you guys think so too. And hopefully, like, even if you're not using this to make sprites, there's, you know, Kriya to come up with character concepts. There's, you know, Tripo 3D to make, uh, to make 3D models from. Um, there's the whole method on, you know, creating, creating your sprites from that. Um, we've got AccuRig for fast rigging of your characters. We've got Mixamo for animating. This is a pretty feature packed video and a pretty feature packed workflow. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please leave me a comment and let me know what you guys think. Um, if you guys got anything you, you would like to add that you think would speed this up or, or make this workflow better or any critiques or any questions, just, just let me know. All right, this is already longer than I expected it to be. so. I'm out of here.